as we unravel the mystery behind Muti. The interest towards my topic was a very controver controversial one. So with the study of botany, we look at the uses of plants. And one of the uses is medicine. But with medicine, the study of Western medicine, taking plants and actually using them for Western medicine, is a bit over-researched. But no one really knows about the use of traditional medicine and how it has influenced Western culture. So with me, studying Muti, yeah, that's how the interest got sparked. Well, I'd taken a walk, before I actually started my research, I'd taken a walk in the market. And for me, it was, as an African child, for me it was just breaking the stereotype of Muti. Because once you get to the market, you're met with all these stereotypes that you've, you've grown up knowing, um, all these stories and myths and legends that everybody's always told you about these places, very taboo things about them. So me engaging in that and having a science perspective to it actually grew my curiosity as to what exactly happens there. And instead of being morbidly scared, I was actually very curious to see what do they do? What have our ancestors been teaching them to a point that I can actually experience it as self? So going into the market, as daunting as it sounds, was like a, an adventure for me. And I guess that's what science is. Sparking your, something that sparks your curiosity and you follow it through. Welcome to the wonderful world of DNA barcoding. Now to simply explain what DNA barcoding is, it's a relatively new science that uses a short sequence, gene sequence, on a standard genome to actually identify species. What did I just say? It is basically, for example, imagine you're in a supermarket and you walk down any aisle. Once you get to the till, you're actually able to scan your item and the scan machine displays the name of the item. Now how is that possible and how can that same technology be applied to natural resources? This is where DNA barcoding was birthed. We take an unknown sample, we bring it to the lab, we extract its DNA, which is the basis of all life, and all life contains DNA. We extract its DNA and when we digitalize its DNA, we are able to identify what sample it is. The advantage of DNA barcoding is that you simply need a small piece of the plant material to extract DNA from. You don't need to look at the sample, at its flowering parts, or at any root system. You merely need a simple small piece of plant material to start the process, and you can actually identify your sample to a species level. So, there are three basic steps to DNA barcoding, and we have four rooms in here which we use for DNA barcoding. This right here is the extraction room. That's where we get our samples and we actually extract the DNA from the sample. Then we go into our main lab where we do most of our physical work with the extracted sample. Main lab. So this is the main lab where most of our lab conductors and instructors will actually come and do their physical lab work where we'll do, conduct most of our experiments using the centrifuge machine or the PCR machine. So the PCR machine actually multiplies the amount of DNA we have in our sample so we have a tangible amount to actually process further. So this is the gel room, as you can see. You can't really enter without um, the proper gear because of the exposure of UV lights and other chemicals. But in this room, what we do is we visualize our DNA on a gel, what we call a gel, and you'll see an image of that later. This is where we can see if our plant sample actually contains the right amount of DNA for us to continue with our process. Then last but not least, this is our sequencing room where we take our samples once it's been PCR and visualized, we bring it to this big machine over here called the sequencer. What this does is it turns the actual material DNA into digital DNA containing the four bases A, T, G and C. 
So what we do is we plant our actual DNA material into this machine and we can digitalize it here into our basic bases, A, C, T and G. So what we basically do in this lab is turn actual DNA into digital DNA which we can analyze and actually compare to what is out there. So right now I'm going to show you a basic demonstration of what we do with the samples once we, they come in from the market. So this is a sample that we've just collected from the Muti market. What we do is we place it on the sheet so it doesn't contam contaminate our surface. Then we have alcohol swab which we use to actually clean any contaminants that can be found on our, on our sample. This is an extraction kit which we actually take, we actually use to take just a bit of leaf sample, probably five centimeters by five centimeters of any flashy leaf material. Once we've done that, we will then place our leaf sample using these forceps into a container and in that process go to the extraction room and start the chemical process of lysing, which means breaking down the material to open up so the DNA can actually be extracted from the plant sample. From a personal point of view, my aha moment was, because I always wanted to avail the mystery behind Muti since it's such a taboo topic, my aha moment was actually realizing, well, you know what, most Western ways are actually uh, grown from our traditional ways. It's just that in our traditional ways, they have rhymes and riddles that come with how to and why. And if you don't study those rhymes and riddles, which is why we have sangomas, you'll never quite understand what they mean. For example, um, we all know that growing up in black communities, if a child is born, you're not allowed to see the child for three months. And there'll be a sangoma who comes through and cleanses the place, and no other relative is supposed to come in. So I was always curious as to why that is. And through the study, I was able to actually um, understand that the reason why they do that has a scientific backing to it, in that they're trying to sterilize that child's environment as much as they can, and that infant has enough time to actually build up their immune system to face the world. So that's why they isolate the child for three months. So it's a mystical yet reasonable way of doing things. And I think that that was my aha moment, the alignment of traditional medicine with Welsh, Western known medicine, how they align and how one theory is aligned to another. It's the exact same thing, it's just that this one is known as mystical and yeah, taboo.